Hey everybody, Coach Hawn here with you on behalf of Packernet.com. I'm going to take a look and I, I was able to get a few questions from you uh, via Facebook um, from Ryan. Um, so I'm going to take a look at a few of those questions and take a look at really uh, a strange game um, between Green Bay and Tampa Bay just yesterday. So this will be a relatively quick video. Um, I do want to just kind of give you an idea of some of the things I saw, I guess, um, and some of the questions that I still have unanswered. Um, so overall, I guess for me, it looked like defensively, um, there were some big, big problems with the scheme, um, with, with the way that the, the Packers were instructed to stop this Tampa Bay offense. And then offensively, I honestly thought the scheme itself was, was pretty good. It just came down to execution by the players. And as you'll see in a couple of these clips, um, not very good execution, I don't think. So um, again, I'm just a high school coach. I don't really know all the answers. So there may be some error in here. Um, if, if you think there's error, please let me know. But taking a look at this, I'm just a little bit confused um, defensively, to be honest with you. So the first question we got is from Katie Sunderman. Um, why can't we get pressure this season on the quarterback? Um, it's one of the things I was kind of questioning too. So we'll see here early in the game, just the start of the second quarter, second and eight for Tampa Bay. Uh, Green Bay is showing a little bit of pressure here with a forefront. But the big thing to understand is Green Bay is an empty. So right here, that's Tom Brady. OK, and there's nobody around him. There's no back. There's no tight end. I mean, there's a tight end here, but they're going to release him on the route. This is empty. So to us, it's Trey Wright empty, meaning five receivers are going out, which means you can only do man protection. OK, the only thing you can do up front is offensive line as offensive lineman, excuse me, is man protection. So if I'm a D coordinator and anytime I see empty, I'm bringing five. I'm bringing five rushers thinking that one of my five dudes is going to be one of your five dudes before that quarterback can get the ball out. And we still have six in coverage, six on five in coverage. So you can play some cover one or even some robber type of stuff. Um, Green Bay, for whatever reason, decided not to do this. Watch this. This is weird. Keep your eye on the two down linemen right here. They're going to both bust out and spy for some reason. So you got two D tackles running to a zone, kind of chasing Gronk, which means you only have two rushers. It's two against five right now, which is bizarre to me because look where they end up. They both spot drop in the exact same spot. It doesn't make sense. You never do that. Essentially right now, Tampa Bay is playing 11 on nine because these two dudes are, are wasted. They're useless right now. They're spot dropping into the same spot as defensive tackles. So Brady's got all day to throw. He's going to find Mike Evans on a really easy pitch and catch on a speed out. It, it doesn't make sense to me. That has to be a bust or something because I don't think you scheme that up. And if you do, you should be answering some pretty tough questions this Monday morning. But it's not all defense. We're going to take a look at an offensive play here next. This one really kind of burns me, honestly, because if we go to the very start of the play, oh, my apologies, my navigation is all off. I'm a little bit frazzled, I guess, today. Um, if we go to the very start of that next offensive play, I want you to take a look at the top of the screen at Robert Tanyan right here. Okay. He just came into what we call Zach motion or, or excuse me, Zin motion, Z in. Okay. So we brought him in tight and what he's supposed to do is chip release the edge defender. Okay. They're going to go ahead and let Bakhtiari take the D end off of it. That means Elgton Jenkins here. And then your man across the board, You're, you should be in good shape protection wise. As long as Tanyan chips, if this guy does blitz, if he doesn't blitz, blitz, excuse me, then he just goes out on the rope. But watch Robert Tanyan right here. OK, watch him. And he just kind of picks off Bakhtiari's guy and makes him go way inside, which kills Bakhtiari's path. That sucks. And then he just kind of gets lost out here. He just kind of watches that corner or that nickel, excuse me, come in on Rogers. That's it's very bizarre to me why that would happen. Why would he go inside first? OK, we understand that that D end is Bakhtiari's job right here. OK, so why are you even going to chip that? Now you're out of position for this blitz coming. Now you're all turned around like what is going on here? Pressure on Rodgers. He floats it. You know, there's nobody really in the area. They could have called grounding. If they didn't, I guess I don't really know, but I'm very confused on that. So here we have an empty look again, right? Oh, perfect. They're in empty. It's just Tom Brady back here. If I'm a D coordinator, I'm sending five. Like, let's get after him. Let's go get him. Let's get aggressive. It's second and seven. You know, they ain't going to run the ball. Like, go get him, right? 
Well, they don't. See, again, they spot drop this big D tackle number 90, Montravius Adams. He's 6'4", 304. And they're asking him to jam and plug up the middle in coverage, which is weird to me. Plus, they're only rushing three. It's literally three on five. These two linemen right here, your center and your right guard, have no job. They can just go help right now. Now, Brady's got all day to throw. Like, it doesn't make sense why you would spot drop Montravius Adams to Gronk. Again, guys, empty. Again. Look, they finally bring four. Then they bail out of it. Who's in the flats? It's bizarre to me. The scheme itself is really bizarre. So either Mike Pettin's scheme is really, really risky on third and down and two, third and short like this, especially getting into the red zone, you never, never give up the flats. Okay, so this is either a, a huge bust in coverage or it's a really bizarre scheme to me. Um, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's a first down. And now they're moving the ball into the red zone again, which is um, weird. OK, but to, for lack of a better word, it's just weird. But again, it's not like the offense was flawless either. You're going to see a really nice slide protection look here from the line. Slide protection is really nice because you just gap protect it. That means everybody here is going to slide to the right and it picks up twists and stunts really nicely. And then the back just gets right to the edge really quick and picks up the edge pressure. Now watch the back number 30, Jamal at or uh, Jamal Williams here, you'll watch him kind of hesitate and look to the middle first for some reason, okay? The line's got this covered, okay? There's slide protecting, it's all covered here. All you gotta do, bud, is just get to this edge and at least chip him or something, but you're gonna watch Jamal Williams kind of stutter to the middle a bit, get way out of position, now Rodgers goes down for the sack. It's weird, okay? And it's really only one step in the pass pro game. If you're one step off, you're going to be in a world of hurt, just like we saw there with Adam or with Williams, excuse me. Speaking of one step off in the passing game, now losing Bakhtiari, that's tough, okay? That is that is really tough. Rick Wagner, I'm sure he's a great guy, but he is not David Bakhtiari, okay? So we have slide protection here again. All the offensive linemen are supposed to slide to the right, cover the gap to the right, and the back out of the backfield, once again, is going to pick up the edge. But Rick Wagner here, for some reason, watch the left tackle right here. Okay, he's walking out. He's widening out at first. His steps are going left. That's all it takes. Okay, because as he goes left, now he has to redirect to go inside to where he should have gone immediately. Now Jason Pierre-Paul has passed him already. Okay, and not only is that bad, but usually, you know, if you get beat flat out in in pass pro, sometimes Rodgers can make you right just by making a man miss back there. But not only did you screw up really bad at by going left because. JPP can now beat you across your face, but it changed this blitzing linebacker's path, which means the back out of the backfield has no chance to pick him up where he should. See how the back is coming out of that play fake? That back should be fitting right here because that linebacker should be fitting right in here. That's his gap protection, okay? But because 71 Rick Wagner widened out initially, now this backer widens out. Now all of a sudden, it's just a walk to the quarterback. It's a very, very simple play that for some reason – doesn't go down right. You can watch him. I don't understand how this happens. He widens out to the left initially, and then from there, he tries to beat JPP back to the inside, and by that time, the paths are all screwed up. Everything's wrong. Uh, the running back doesn't have a shot at blocking this blitzing backer, and those two are going to go have a meeting at the quarterback, and that's a, that's a tough play, especially on first down. Okay, now you're looking at second and 19 deep in your own zone. Like, that's a tough thing. So, I don't have any answers, to be honest with you all. Um, very, very sloppy game from the, the offensive execution portion of it. And just a very strange, I guess, very weird defensive scheme. So I wish I had answers, but this is kind of the stuff that I'm seeing. If you're seeing it different, let me know. OK, again, uh, my name is Coach Hawn. I'm here on behalf of Packernet.com uh, for my buddy Ryan. If you're if you're looking for a little bit more passionate insight than what I can give, I strongly suggest that you check out Ryan's podcast um, on Packernet. It is exceptionally well done and it is very insightful. So here's to hoping for a better week against Houston. Um, until then, we'll see you guys later.